Why do some analog camera setups say HD? I'm going to guess that what you're looking at is there are some analog cameras that have onboard 1080p or 4K recording. And they record to an SD card on the drone. So you get HD recording onboard and SD back to your goggles. But other than that, you're right. That that question makes no sense. Blunty, can you think of any other interpretation that makes that make sense? I'm sorry. What's the issue? Oh, sorry. Why it's do like, some? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, uh, well, there's a bunch of HD cameras that were for analog, right? Like uh, the Turtle and the. Yeah, the ones there... with on the ones with onboard recording. That's the one yes. I mentioned. Can you think gotcha. of any other interpretation that makes it make sense? I can't. No. Yeah, me neither. Okay, great. Because all we'll are okay. Here's a question: Are all analog cameras 480 or lower? Is that right? Well, so uh, no, technically. Um, so, like for security systems, there are 1080 analog cameras. So, so NTSC and PAL are a standard definition analog format with like so many scan lines. Okay, that's standard definition. There are analog standards for high definition, legit high definition 1080p. They are, as far as I know, they are never used over the air. They're only used like in wired security systems. And they have, for the most part, been replaced, I think, although I'm not an expert on security systems, by digital ones that, that use like H264 I can tell or you, whatever. I converted a whole building yeah, from oh, you old did? analog HD to IP cameras, yeah. There you go. But I've never seen an analog camera used for an FP, an analog HD camera used for FPV because the video transmitters we use only support standard definition broadcasts. Uh, the only case where that happened was uh, this is really obscure. The original Sharkbite video transmitter, not HD zero, but the very first Sharkbite video transmitter had an analog input, not a digital input. And it used an analog, it used one of those high definition analog standards uh, to feed the VTX. Um, but that's, uh, that's an exception, not the rule. Yeah, interesting. I'm, I'm, always, I'm always surprised. I never know what it'll turn out that you did, Blunty. <laughs> like, I have a list. That of... was part of working at the Grow. I did everything in the Grow. If you can think of think something in a twenty five thousand square foot building that needs to be done, I know how to do it. Plumbing, yeah. electrical, uh, the internet, IP cameras, backups, to filing paperwork at the city for permits. Uh, yeah. I did everything on that building. So. Some of that sounds really fun to me, like the idea that your job is today you get to like build an IP camera system, tomorrow you get to put in networking gear you know, etc. I don't know. Some of it, I think, like the plumbing, I'm not so sure I would love. But. That's, it was, for me, it was something different. So, like, as long as I didn't have to do it all the time, that was good enough for me. And I had yeah. another guy there with me as, like, a maintenance head who I could, yeah. like, pawn a lot of that stuff off of. That's but, cool. I mean, that's why yeah. I stayed in that job for so long is because I got to do different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I like the networking. So I still, I have a, an overly complicated home network uh, like I have three access points, one on my front porch, one on my back porch and one in my house. And I have a wireless bridge link out to that outbuilding in my field, which itself has two access points in it. And I have like a, a, a firewall, like that's way overpowered for what we do. And mostly I have that stuff just because I'm so used to, cause I was a computer networking guy. And like, if I just had like a home router, that didn't give me access to the tools that I'm used to having, it would drive me crazy, even though I kind of don't need those tools anymore. But yeah, I will always have an overcomplicated home network. Do you think that's because you only did, like, what else have you done professionally? Like, cause like, when I think about things like that, everything that I did, I don't want to do again. It's like, I'm, I'm like have the simplest router and I did all the networking in the building, but I don't want to do it. I did it for four other stores too. I don't have any interest in touching well, anything networking unless I have to. <laughs> I, I think my guess is that for you, like networking was 
a sort of a one-off thing that was fun while it was new, but what, but then you were like, okay, I'm done with this. Like, like I went through a phase where I worked on my car. Like I didn't really work on it in a real sense, but like I changed my oil. I actually rotated my tires once and I don't have an impact gun and I don't have a lift. I literally put, put one axle on a jack stand and took the wheel off with a, with a lug wrench. And then I put the other axle on a jack stand and took that wheel off with a lug wrench and put, and like, I did, I just did that stuff. Cause I like, was like, I'm going to do this. And then I was like, okay, that's good. I got that out of my system and I'll never do it again. But networking, I really enjoyed. I mean, I did it for many years and I enjoyed it. So I still kind of enjoy it. I guess that's my problem. Cause I don't ever enjoy anything for that long. Really? Really? Like I have to find new things or pieces about things to learn. Yeah. 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 Like, I don't want to grow weed at home. Like, you know what and I mean? You, like I don't, and you definitely don't. Right. <laughs> right. I actually don't. Cause I can't. And I also don't want to. <laughs> That's right. a lot of work. Okay, good, good. Just to be clear, you Bl Blunty no longer lives in the weed-friendly state of uh, Colorado. He lives in the yeah I... extremely weed-unfriendly state of. Well, it's up to you. I think they're, they're starting that. medical next year, so oh, it's yeah? sort of friendly. Yeah. Wow. Uh anyway. <laughs>